Welcome back to Shit Talk Fridays, everybody. I'm Gina. And I'm Evo. Happy Friday, Evo. Happy Friday, Gina. Yo, episode 102. 102 in the house. Shit. Uh, so tonight we are actually drinking because I said fuck it. Because when we drink tequila, which is our favorite, I feel like I can handle a little bit better when we drink wine and stuff like that. At the end of the show, I'm like, fuck, I shouldn't have did that. <laughs> I have like instant regret. I feel like we go through phases, you know, throughout our relationship. I feel like that we've gone through phases of alcohol. Like one time for a while, like we were heavy into vodka, like Ugh. heavy, right? We were yeah, just, vodka tonic was yeah, my drink. Just, yeah, vodka, vodka tonics, all this stuff, and then eventually that just wasn't sitting right with us, so we had to switch. I think it was like the tonic was too sweet, and I was. I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, for me... I think we discovered tequila is what happened. I felt like I was literally getting a hangover before I finished my first glass. Like, it was oh, really? That, it was that bad. I would literally get a headache. Literally? Literally get a headache as I was finishing my first glass. So I knew that that was a sign. Something had to change. Um, and then I found tequila. <laughs> and man, when I tell you... Tequila. It was like, where you been all my life? So, so let's cheers. Yeah, definitely let's cheers to that. Cheers. And um, if you're just noticing, if you're watching, yeah, we got a new setup. <clears throat> we have to switch it on them a little bit. You know, this is the evolution of the show. Yeah, so, that's actually a lot stronger than I remember it being. And it's because I haven't drank in so long. Ah, it tastes great to me. It does. It just still does taste great. It just... Um, and this is Añejo, right? Yeah, the Añejo. 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 <laughs> I can't remember if it's Añejo or Reposado because aren't they both dark? Yeah, so the Reposado is a little on the lighter side. The Añejo is the... When you say lighter, you mean color? In color, yeah. And oh, okay. the Añejo is the, uh, the darker one. Yeah, so I always forget. That's why I always forget because I, I know that silver is clear. Yeah, the Añejo is aged more. So it takes more color oh, of the, of the okay. barrel and the it's oak. It's a little bit more expensive. Yes, a little bit more expensive. Okay, so let's get into our topic for tonight. Um, this is a topic that is all over social media, and it is, what do you bring to the table? Well, I brought tequila. I don't know what you brought to the table. <laughs> How about I brought the fucking table? <laughs> the, but you know what? And that is something that is said often. And yeah. a lot of the stuff that we've seen online where women are asked, what do you bring to the table? They say they bring the table. Yeah. So let's uh, let's get into that a little bit. Why don't you exp let's let's talk about what is the table? What does that consist of? And um, hmm. what is the table? Before we get into that, Evo, oh, um, okay. I want to ask you a question sure. first, because I don't want to give all the kit and caboodle away right away what mm. the table is, because then that entails what women potentially have to offer. Right. Right. OK. I don't want to give that away just yet. I think the first thing that I really want to dive into is why do you think men because it's men asking women this question. What do you bring to the table? What right. value do you bring? Why do you think men are asking this question to women? And why do you think it's primarily from what I've seen, single men asking this, obviously? Um, so I think that if you're asking a woman this question, it's probably coming from an insecure place. Mm. Um, it's probably coming from a place of someone who's been taken advantage of because they have money. Someone that probably uses their money a lot to represent how they feel and how they navigate their way through a relationship rather than their personality. Hmm. And so uh, those situations are typically taking advantage of from people who are less fortunate and don't have money. You know, they see that as, oh, well, this person has it to offer. I'm going to make the most of it. And, you know, the person who has the money, which in this situation is the guy, probably at some point maybe feels like they're being taken advantage of. So... At some point in a, in, a, in a relationship in the future, they're probably going to want to know, okay, what do you bring into the table? Because they feel like that they have this money thing to bring to the table. Or they could be broke and just trying to figure out, you know, whether the girl that they're, you know, maybe getting to know has something to offer to, you know, where they don't have to worry about them financially carrying <laughs> the relationship. Mm, okay. So, you know, it can kind of like, it Go can both play both ways. ways. Yeah, for sure. I, it's... um. It, it really depends on the situation. But I, I feel like in most cases, it's coming from someone who's 
like just using money to like navigate through their relationships and they probably been you know they get taken advantage of at some point so just to kind of unpack what you're saying you feel like when it comes to the money it can be on both ends whether they have money and they don't want to get taken advantage of or they don't have money and they don't want to be looked at as the primary source of finances when it comes to the relationship yeah they don't they want to like kind of get it out in the open to, to you know and figure out whether they're going to have to be the one carrying the financial burden of the relationship or does the person that they're talking to whether it's a guy or a girl has something to bring to the table okay you know maybe maybe they're looking for someone to kind of maybe take advantage of a little bit you know maybe they're trying to figure out it does this situation benefit me because i need someone that has a little bit more financially stable a little bit more financially stable than i am hmm. and so that they're looking for that situation so that they can benefit from it so in essence they're kind of looking to potentially manipulate the person you know i don't want to say manipulate you know some people just have these requirements that they need in a person that they're dating mm -hmm. that might be one of them for that person you know maybe they're not they're not in a position where they can just not have to worry about money in a relationship so they have to make sure that the person that they're with Mm -hmm. has some money to bring to the table so that the financial responsibility of carrying the relationship doesn't solely fall on them. So then why not be forthcoming and say, this is my financial situation and, because, this, is, and this is where I am in my life? Well, in a perfect world, yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? But is everybody going to do that? No. Does everybody want to... But if you're willing to ask this, what I consider to be a almost disrespectful question to an extent question why wouldn't you be also willing to just be forthcoming again that would be that would be great mm -hmm. if that were the case but think about it on like a think about it coming from somebody that's a little bit arrogant right mm -hmm. somebody that maybe doesn't have a lot of chips to play with but they're playing it like they do mm -hmm. so that they're perceived as someone of value and they're asking like oh what do you bring into the table trying to get this information out of that person as if that person needs to be forthcoming now because I'm because I'm, I'm going to I'm going to take the position of the person that's asking. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's just say I, I'm, I ask, you know, conversation, you know, we're dating, whatever. And then I just come out and say, like, you know, so in this, you know, if this if this relationship, you know, goes any further, like, what do you bring into the table? I think that if I ask that you would you you may think like, oh, shit, like this dude is really cocky, you know, like he must. He must have something to be asking me in this manner, you know, you might even feel intimidated in, enough where you may even answer that question, mm -hmm. but I may be bluffing completely. Yeah. So somebody that's got something to hide, but they want to use that as leverage to figure out what you got to offer may say it in that way okay. and not be forthcoming. So in regards to the first part of that, why in saying, why do you think men asked this question you led with maybe they had gotten taken advantage of yeah so how would you think that like how do you think that plays out like what what is happening to men in the case of getting taken advantage of that is then leading them to ask that question because i would like to hear it from a man well what do you think is happening to like i in myself that situation? i myself have never led a relationship on that on that note okay but how are men getting taken? Uh, how how is a man getting taken advantage of by a woman? Because he's using his money to impress her. Mm -hmm. He's using his money to to carry the relationship rather than mm -hmm. his personality. He's using it rather instead of being empathetic, caring, a nice person, charming, mm -hmm. thoughtful, loyal, honest, kind. All of these things that are intangible, mm -hmm. they lead with the tangible stuff. Okay. Oh, here's some flowers. Let's go out to dinner. Let's go, you know, on a boat ride. Let's go on a helicopter ride. You know, all of these, using all of this money to impress her. Okay. And so that's how a person can easily be taken advantage of. Because someone may see that as an opportunity to gain material things that they you know that they may have wanted to experience 
oh, this person likes me. He likes spending money. So let's, you know, may he be inclined to buy me an outfit? Maybe he, may, will he be inclined to, you know, get my nails done or get my hair done? You know, buy me lingerie. Mm -hmm. All these things take me on a vacation. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if, okay, so if you see that someone doesn't mind spending money, mm -hmm. you may start suggesting things to do in a rela in, within the relationship that that person is going to pay for. At some point, that person might feel like, wow, you know, like I, it went from me offering to now like this person asking mm -hmm. and then might find themselves in a situation like, whoa, this is like this got to a place where, you know, mm -hmm. this is not where I wanted this to be. And then they feel like they're being taken advantage of. I find that whole statement so confusing because you're what you said is for a person to get taken advantage of would mean that they are almost unknowing to what is happening to them. Uh, okay. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. So in that regard, how is it the man is getting taken advantage of if, if he led with, these are my assets, this is how I'm going to impress you, and then the woman or the man in turn then says, okay, great. This is cool. Would you also like to purchase this for me? How is that getting taken, like, how because is that? Because that's, that's imposing. So then the person is now imposing on the man, mm -hmm. right? So, but doesn't... For, for her benefit. Sure. So that's to her advantage. Okay. So, but that's not taking advantage of the man because in that same regard, the man has the ability to say no. You're right. He does. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that at some point it, it ends, it ends, right? I think mm -hmm. at some point he does put his foot down. Okay. And I feel like that that's the reason why mm -hmm. moving forward that conversation comes about. Right. It's an experience like that. Right. Mm -hmm. That all of a sudden makes that person feel like, all right, moving forward, I need to know what this person brings to the table before I even do anything. And then that's how that conversation kind of comes about. So I think it's interesting that in that situation, let's say a man walks away from that and says, I'm not going to let that happen to me anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not going to let a woman take advantage of me. But the next woman that I meet, I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did before, showing my assets, displaying my assets, but I'm going to ask her what she brings to the table. In my honest opinion, to me, that sounds like the definition of insanity. If you're going to keep doing the same thing and expecting different results, aren't you a little bit crazy? Why not change your approach in how you date a woman? Yeah, sure. I mean, listen, I'm speaking I'm speaking from a perspective that I don't even know of. Like I've never I've never had this conversation with yeah. a woman. I've never Why do you think you've never had this conversation with a woman before? Because it's just not something that I look for in a woman. I don't want to know what she brings to the table. I don't like I, I want to know does she have intangible things to bring to the table? Things that I can't buy with money. Mm. Those are the things that are valuable to me. But that's just me. You know, I want to know is she, you know, again, I just I'm going to repeat what I said. I want to know if she if she's funny, if she's kind, if she's if she's loyal, if she's if she's honest. Um is she a good person? Does she is she empathetic? Like these are things that are not easily found in a person. So I'm more curious to know do you possess those things inside of you rather than what you possess in your bank account? Mm. Um what do you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the only sign that they're compatible with is a dollar sign. And that's just real talk. You heard it here on Shit Talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's just gonna... real talk. You know, like, I don't know what it is that compatibility that they're looking for because you're not looking for anything within a person if you're asking what they bring to the table. That actually brings me to a point that I wanted to talk about. Something that I think ties into this what do you bring to the table conversation. So if anyone is familiar, there's a show on Netflix called Indian Matchmaker. And this oh, is boy. like a <laughs> this is like a guilty pleasure of yeah, it was a good show. Yeah. So it started off being something that I watch um, amongst my girlfriends. We were all talking about it. And then one day when I had the show on Evo kind of did the what are you watching thing? And then before I knew it, we were watching it together, yeah. and then we devoured season two. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was definitely something you like. I it, it, like I literally like got hooked instantly. Yeah. 
so it's because like i said it's a guilty pleasure it's like one of those you know it's like garbage tv but at yeah. the same time it's 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 like a novella you get fucking caught up in it so that being said in the show what i found to be really interesting about this what do you bring to the table conversation is um the person that does the matchmaking has this kind of system where when they meet the person that's looking to be match made with they have this thing that they call a bio data and the bio data is the person that's looking to date will break down the criteria or you know kind of like the preferences of what they're looking for in a potential partner and i want to say out of 99 percent of the people on the show they all listed things that what emo and i are calling tangible things such as money education status a good career um really embedded into their culture physically fit oh yeah works wow out. i, I yeah. totally forgot about that physically fit works out likes to do things outdoors all of these things that on paper they looked amazing you would think that it would literally give you a prince charming or a princess right and what wind up happening the majority of the time was when these people were match made with someone that met i want to say like almost like 80 percent of their bio data there was like almost never a connection yeah you're right there wasn't because they were looking for nub in all the wrong places because they were looking for this person to look good in a way that is like what is considered what are you bringing to the table conversation these very what do you have, yeah like what do you have to offer me yeah what do you have to offer me and then what wind up happening is with a lot of the people on the show was some of them found people outside of the matchmaking uh, scenario. And when they did, when the lady that was doing the matchmaking would follow up with them and say, okay, great. Tell me about this person. Like, what was it about them that you made this connection? And I want to tell you that all of the people on the show would say the same fucking thing. Oh, just like the way that they made me feel. And there was just like this connection. There was this spark between us. None of them talked about the money. None of them talked about the careers. None of them talked about how fit they were. None of them went into the things that they listed on their bio data that made them feel like that's what connected me to this yeah. other human being. Right. There was only one guy on the show. And God forgive me, I forget his name, but he was in season two. And when his bio data was asked, he was the only person that led with, I want this person to be a good person. I want them to have a good sense of humor. All He listed all of these intangible things. He was literally... He, the, just, he literally said, I want a best friend. Yes. He Those said, were his words exactly. He said all of the things that I was like, this man is the only person that I think understands what it means to find a true partner in right. your life. Um. He did have some of those like tangible requirements because he did, he was a sheik. So uh, there were some religious commitments mm -hmm. that yeah. he was looking to kind of stay with him. But really, other than that, there wasn't much. And I think when a lot of men are asking this question of what do you bring to the table, they're looking for these bio data requirements. And what I find so interesting about that is. Because a part of the argument, men will say to the women, okay, what do you have to bring to the table? And then the women will say, well, you know, I make a house a home. You know, I'll take care of the kids. I'll cook, I'll clean. And then the men will turn around and say, I can hire a cook. I can hire a maid. I can get an escort, Yeah. you know, for sex. I can get a babysitter. So if I can pay for all of these things, what do you bring to the table? And when I hear that, like, rebuttal, to the women i immediately think then he, this man is not looking for a partner no he's not he's looking for a transaction he's looking for you're exactly right you hit the nail on the head he's definitely looking for a transaction because they're yes i'm gonna agree with the man in this particular instance when you you know i could pay a woman to have a child with me i can pay a woman to have sex with i can pay anybody to clean my house i can pay anybody to cook for me i can pay anybody to do my laundry um i can even pay a therapist to listen to me talk right mm -hmm. but none of it 
is personal. Every single one of those things is transactional between different people. So your relationships are spread out all over the place. And I think that anybody who's making that comparison as like, I can get everything that you're offering by paying 13 or 14 different people is missing the one thing that we all love, even the people with money. And that's convenience. It is convenient to have all of that in one person, Mm. a best friend, a soulmate, a lover, um, somebody to talk to, somebody to cook for you, somebody to rub your back. Somebody that you can trust. Somebody like in in, in all right. There's no trust in all that other stuff where you can buy, right? Because like you trust these people on a surface level, mm. but there's no depth to it. So I feel like that those people that speak that way, they're not looking for anything that's meaningful. The other thing that I wanted to mention was that I thought that relationships were supposed to be opposites attract. I mean, I feel like that that's usually what brings two things together. I thought that in order for two people to really appreciate each other, they had to bring, they had to have something that the other person saw of value. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I have money, then someone who doesn't have as much money that I do would appreciate me as a provider Mm -hmm. and as a financial pillar in the relationship to do what we do. Like they would see me in a way that not many would see me, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm a very valuable person to that woman. There's gonna be a woman in this sense. Um, In the same aspect, because I have money, I don't need another woman with money. I need a woman that I could trust. I need a woman that's gonna make me feel good. I need a woman for many different reasons, but not for financial reasons. Yeah. So why am I like so bent up on what what financially do you have to bring to the table? I got the money. Yeah. I don't need you to bring that. I need you to give me something that I can't buy. And so when I hear these people talk about all this, like, oh, I could do, I could buy, I could buy, I could buy. What do you bring into the table? Then you're not looking for a woman. Yeah. You're really not. It just it's it's it just sounds like shit to me. And it's because I think that a man that is really seeking true a true relationship or a true partnership doesn't need to be sold on a woman. Absolutely not. You know, it's not like, you know, when you go buy a house and you walk into houses and you look at houses and you're like, look, it has three bedrooms and two bathrooms and right. the real and the real estate agent is like, and it has hardwood floors. And, you know, he, the real estate agent is trying to sell you on the house right? because you are looking for certain features within that house. I think when a man sees a woman or a woman sees a man, if they are truly interested, they don't need to be sold on that person. Yeah. It doesn't have to be presented to them in a way where it's almost like they're looking to make a purchase yeah and for anybody who asked the question right what do you bring to the table just know that whatever that person brings to the table as long as they're bringing whatever they have they're bringing a hundred percent and i think that's all that matters right i don't think i think that it's important that the person that you're with is putting everything that they have into the relationship. Mm. You don't want to be with somebody that has a bunch of stuff that they're not bringing into the relationship because they have money. You want to be with somebody who's all in, regardless of what they have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I got. I'm investing everything into what into you. And mm-hmm. to me, that's more valuable than a Porsche or, or a house or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, like... I don't know. This is this this whole discussion doesn't make sense, and I just and well, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I think, in, in in my opinion, is a lot of the times when I see this dynamic happening on social media, it's like men asking young girls and young women, and it's also young men, and the men are like berating them with this question, and then the women feel like they need to defend themselves, and then yeah. they're saying these things that they think are of value to a man. They're saying things like, you know, I cook, I clean, I do this, and the men are, you know, then they're coming back with the same. It is this like vicious cycle of mm-hmm. this conversation, and I think why it's crazy is because the woman at that point in time, especially when they're younger, I'm gonna say this 
and Evo likes to say hindsight is 2020. When I look back at myself when I was a younger woman in my early 20s, did I really understand the true value of who I was as a woman? Absolutely not. So I think these younger women, a lot of the times, don't understand the full scope of who they are as a woman and what they truly have to bring to the table or what true value they possess. Because in my opinion, the true value and the true essence of a woman is nothing tangible. Right. Because statistics will tell you that when a woman has higher education and makes a lot of money, she's less likely to find a happy relationship long term or get married because she has those things that a lot of men are positioning as what they bring to the table. And they're like, fuck. Yeah. Wh what do I do now? So in that regard, these women are still trying to figure themselves out. And when a woman understands her true value, because when I look at our relationship, Evo, and when I sit back and I think about what I brought to our relationship, none of it was, there was really nothing that I can reflect upon that I maybe gave you financially or something that um, was of like a tangible product or fucking asset that I gave that made our relationship evolve to the point that it is now. When I reflect upon our relationship, I think about the things that I was able to provide for you that really brought us to where we are now 20 years later are things like support. And, you know, what's that saying behind every strong man is a strong woman? And I think that is in essence who we are. There have been many moments in our relationship where you needed a little push. And I was that person to give it to you. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's and and vice versa. Yeah, that's that's definitely um you know an asset to have in a relationship. Um, I just want to say this right. So mm -hmm. to any of you younger women out there that may find yourself in a position where um, anybody, a man or another woman, is asking you what do you bring to the table, do yourself a favor. Don't even answer the question. Word. Get the fuck up and walk the fuck out because what that statement says to you is that you mean zero to me. Only thing that means anything to me is what you have to bring to the table. What material things are you bringing to this table, right? And what that says is that when push come to shove and our backs against are against the wall and all of that shit that you brought to the table is gone, you mean nothing, okay? And that's the last person you want to be with. You want to be you want to be with the person that when the chips are down. And you're fucking down and out and all the fucking glitz and glamour and all that shit is gone for whatever reason. And you're in a tough spot that that person still values you. And anybody who values you will never ask you what you bring to the table. They just want to know everything about you. And if you're a good person and if you are, if you're a person of value and you have all of the intangible things that a person can bring to the table yeah because i think about like when i dated before us evo a lot of the reasons why i didn't continue dating a guy was because he lacked depth mm -hmm. he was very surface level yeah maybe he dressed really nice maybe he drove a really nice car maybe he made a lot of money but we would sit down and have a conversation and i it was like watching paint dry and I learned very quickly that the things that i truly valued in a man were the things that i almost literally could not see they're the things that are built inside of who he is that they come out in like small increments that they surprise you every time that they happen there are so many times still within our relationship that you say things to me and i'm like fuck he ain't wrong <laughs> 20 years later yeah. and i'm still shocked by some of the things that you put into play in our relationship but I knew that you were always going to be that man because I saw that in you so long ago because I looked for that depth. I wasn't, you know, blinded by what you had. And I think what tends to happen is, is that women and men will be blinded by what these the opposite sex has. So if it's a man looking at a woman, maybe it's her physical features that they become blinded by and then maybe they get taken advantage of. <laughs> right. And and if it's a if it's a woman looking at a man, maybe she's blinded by 
she's blinded by his money and his status and the items that he pos- he possesses mm-hmm. right and then what winds up happening they get together and then they realize that none of that shit fucking and matters listen, you get what you ask for so take it because you asked for it if you're looking <laughs> for material things in a relationship then guess what don't be looking for a good person like just Word. be happy with the fucking material things that you got Word. you know if the man is this st- or i don't want to say man right but if the person that is a douchebag or an asshole or a un- or a liar or not loyal like that's not what was valuable to you mm-hmm. so don't be mad if you know the person that you're with is not a good person because guess what you were focused on the material shit and you know take it because you asked for it and listen i'm not going to sit here and say that things like financial position and career and and being healthy i'm not going to say that those things are not important but those are the things that as a couple you can grow together you can't grow a man's fucking heart you can't grow a a you can't grow a man's, or I don't even want to use the word grow, but when a man is in a way in his life where maybe he needs healing, a woman shouldn't come into your life seeking to heal you. A yeah. woman shouldn't come into your life seeking to fix you. Um, I think those are things that should happen individually. However, when it comes to the man's position in his life, like where he is at work, where he is in his, um, you know, maybe journey in fitness or health, where he is in his, you know, longevity for wealth. When two people get together, the ability to grow those things is like exponential. Like you can do that shit forever. But when a man or woman lacks depth in who they are, yo, those things are almost impossible to grow within somebody. I've seen many people try to make those 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 scenarios work and those are the things that together maybe couples will go to therapy for and then still realize that that man or that woman is it's not going to work for them yeah i, th- I think it's amazing and i think the proof is in the pudding when you see some of these uh couples that are somewhat famous and they've weathered the storm through the fame right mm-hmm. So, like, they were together before the fame, Mm -hmm. may come to have made a lot of money together as a couple, and are still together. Why? Because they see beyond the financial gain that they have brought to the relationship, you know. And I feel like that people, it's it's amazing, right? You'll see some, some of these people that, with all the options that they have, right, Mm -hmm. that money brings right as far as like people that are very attractive and things like that you see that their partner is a very average looking person Mm -hmm. why because they were there from the start they see that person for who they are and they see beyond the money and those type of relationships are the ones that are forged and what's what's really valuable in a relationship it's a forged in fire it's a forged in fire (laughs) and i feel like that's how they make fucking steel i feel like you know and the thing is i feel like every relationship should start that way right i feel like every rich person should meet someone and not disclose any of their financial status and truly get to have the person get to know them for who they are yeah and see if they really like them because at the end of the day listen money's gonna solve money problems and that's it But if you got personal problems, you got issues, you got traumas and shit like that, like, you know, after being with somebody who's who has a lot of money, you you could end up very unhappy, very depressed with a lot of money. Yeah. You know, and there's some people that say, yeah, I would rather be, you know, depressed and rich than depressed and broke. Okay, yeah, fine. Sure. enough. But at the end of the day, happiness is is part of your sanity. You know, well, happiness is a choice. With joy, happiness, living that right, yeah. it's it's it, it it's intertwined with, we you, are with your not sanity. Rich and I'm fucking happy. Yes, exactly. But for somebody who seeks like who has like this drive to be, you know, financially at the top one percent. Yeah. You know, you know, if that's the main focus, then they may get there, but they may end up being very unhappy with the, with the person that they're with. Yeah, I just want the women that are either watching or listening to us to really take 
a moment to reflect upon your true value as a woman. Never let a man ever allow you to question yourself of what your value is. Because please understand that your value is not rooted in material things. It is not you the ability that you have to go into a relationship and be the caretaker. It is not the ability that you have to go into a relationship and cook them hot meals. It's not the ability that you have to go into a relationship and fucking keep a house clean. Those are the true those are not the things that are going to truly make you valuable as a woman. Think about the things that you and your friends, your girlfriends love about each other your girlfriends don't love you because you cook them fucking hot meals i mean maybe they do but a lot of the times when i think about me and my friends i think about the times that we fucking laugh together and we have a good time together and we got each other's back think about those things when you want to consider what your true what your true value is I have a friend that I've been friends with for over 30 years and that's one of the things that I love about her so much and I love about our relationship is the fact that when we come into each other's space, we fucking laugh and we have a good time. She's not looking at me and I'm not looking at her like, bitch, you got money? Yeah. Because in order to be my friend for the next 30 years, that's what you got to have. And I think that that's the mindset that some people are going into when they're considering a long a relationship. Not even long term because... That's not even the question. So ladies, really think about your true value. And that takes a lot of self-reflection. And that takes some self-awareness. And like I said earlier, I didn't necessarily have that when I was younger. It took some time for me to really think about, who the fuck is Gina? Like, what does she have to truly offer to a man? Because it sure as hell wasn't money. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well... Hey, listen. When I we, mean, when technically, we, yeah, but no. When we got back together, I sure as hell didn't have it to offer either. So yeah, evil didn't have. What's that saying? Two nickels to rub together. Fuck, I ain't have two two half a pennies to rub <laughs> together. Fuck the bullshit. Half a, I, half a penny. I had two half a pennies to make a whole one. So, but again, but, but I got yes, a lot of pennies now. You were you, <laughs> you were in a bad way. Yeah. But I knew the depth that you possessed. Yeah. As a man. And furthermore, I knew the depth that you possessed as a human being. I'm not telling people to go out there and find people in the gutter and be like, I think you're a good person. No, there's some digging that you have to do. You need to get to know someone. Yeah, and that's why I mentioned that it's, I feel like it's super important for someone with money to to get to, for, for them to be, for, for someone to get to know them. Mm-hmm. Without the financial um, gain that they represent, yeah, uh, I feel like that no matter who I meet in the you know in my present life, they'll never know me the way you know me. Yeah, you know because you know we're we're you know ver- we're very well off now. You know, um, I don't but, know what Eva's talking about, but we weren't at one <laughs> point. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, we're doing okay. We're doing <laughs> we're definitely doing I, okay. I don't, uh, but. I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, you know, we weren't, you know. Oh, my God. We were sleeping on a futon. Yeah, we were sleeping on a futon. Him and, and I and, on a futon. And a little as well. We were sleeping on a futon. In a basement apartment. In a basement apartment. That in a bedroom that I converted that. No, in, is, a, in a living room. Oh, it was yeah, so a living room that, that converted, converted to into a, a bedroom, bedroom. Right. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't even have a living room. But. That futon, that bed, when it folded up into the futon, it turned into, into the living, living room, room, which was crazy. Yeah, and my dresser that I had in the living room was actually covered with something that made it look like it was just like a, like a, um, like a, like I don't a, know, like, like a, like, a de- an, like some sort of decoration, like an entertainment center yeah, type that, of. Yeah, like went to the fucking living yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. No, but it was my dresser. Yeah, I mean, listen, the bathroom. The tile in the bathroom had a hole in it with duct tape on that shit. Sure did. So when I tell you that we are up from the thirty six chambers, yeah, we came up from humble begin, you know, humble beginnings. But I think that that created an opportunity for us to really get to know each other as people without any financial gain, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so moving forward, no matter who I meet in the future, no one will ever know me the way you do. Yeah. 
And I think that's important. I, and I, I and I feel like getting to know each other without having money as something that is uh, an incentive to want to be part of that relationship really creates uh, a relationship that isn't like no other. Yeah. I do think it's important to say a couple of things. If you go out there and you're a man or a woman and you go out there and you're busting your ass to get a great education, to have a great job, to make really good money, of course you're going to want someone that meets you at what you consider your level. But don't let that blind you to some of the amazing people that are out there that what Evo and I are trying to say that can give you some of these really untangible things, these things that are considered priceless, um, things that when the two of you are behind closed doors that you're going to say, without you, I don't know where I would be type shit. Yeah. And money in a car and a house, none of that is going to do that for you. The other thing is, um, I would love for that question to be flipped. So instead of saying, what do you bring to the table? When that person is asked that question, what if the person being asked that question turned around and said, what would you like me to bring to the table? What is it that you are looking for to be brought to the table? I think that's a valid question. Because I actually think that the person asking that question has no fucking clue what it is that they want to be brought to the fucking table. They just want the opportunity to shoot that person down and be like, no, you're no good. And like we said at the beginning of the show, that is rooted in something. I feel like that those people just want to be worshipped. Oh, that's disgusting. It's just what it sounds like. They just want to, they want to, they want to, they want to paint the picture of, you don't have what I have. I have something that's way more valuable than anything that you have to offer. Yeah. So therefore, you need to worship me for it. And that that's gross. By no means is any relationship that anybody should ever want to be in. So, yeah. like I said, Agreed. if you ever ask that question, don't even fucking don't Yo, even get give up the person about the face pleasure of answering that fucking question. Leave I them agree. fucking hanging. I agree. Like the douchebag that they are. Yo, that's a perfect way to end this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Douchebag, Douche peace the fuck out. Peace out. Um, so yeah, that actually brings us to the end of this episode, and um, I like this new setup. Yeah, I like it too. It's interesting. Let us know what you think in the comments. Do yeah. you like it? Do you want us to go back to the other setup? I'm really enjoying this. I like it because I'm a little closer to you. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with and that. Like, I'm not mad at that. Nobody knows what I'm doing underneath the table. <laughs> we'll be down. <laughs> when you see the hands going to the table, you just know that something's going on. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I enjoyed this episode. I always enjoy talking to you. Likewise, it's always a pleasure. And again, I've probably said this the last three episodes. Gina had to peel her life. Yes, you up did. Today. Yo, applause to you for coming, no, for showing up, for real. Because honestly, <laughs> you know, a bitch be a bitch be tired. But um, every time I do it, it's it's kind of like how I feel when when I work out. I really sometimes have to like take a pre workout, have some inner talk, push myself, and then when I'm done, I walk away and I'm like. Man, that was really good. I really enjoyed that. I always feel like that yeah. at the end of an episode. So, if you at home enjoy Evo and I's conversation, and our numbers will say that you do, <laughs> we would hope that we can continue to be here for you. So, go ahead and like, subscribe, share our content, comment, leave a review, whatever it is that you feel like you can do to continue f to help us to be here for you. We kind of take it in all forms, and it's free. And yeah, and there's don't, a donate. Don't cost you nothing. There's a donate link too if you oh, feel if, like if, doing if, a good deed, right? If you wanna, that's what you bring to the table. Yeah, what you bring into this? <laughs> are you bringing donations to the you table? You know what's so funny about this episode? The fact that we started off episode one or two calling it "What do you bring to the table?" and we started off. Yeah, we have a new table. We have a We've new brought the table. table. Um, what are you bringing? Yeah. Anyway, with that being said, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, until next Friday, peace out. Peace out.